Welcome to Tales from the Caveside, where Lillian and Chris, we bought a cave house and finca on the outskirts of a small Spanish town. Follow us as we learn to renovate and create a home that we will be proud of. It's another awesome day. Good Friday. Listen how quiet it is. It's absolutely still. And this is the reason why we're not doing any work. Because it would just be wrong to break the tranquility of the day. So today, instead of making lots of noise... Yes, we are going to clean this floor, remove all this extra that fell. You see, it comes up quite easily off the plastic, and that's the reason the plastic is down, uh, but it's getting quite deep. Right, so we've come to a very, very stubborn area, haven't we? So it's innovation time. <laughs> Just give it a try with a broom handle, and that kind of punctured a hole in the bottom, but this is what we're doing going to make no sense unless I explain it. Yeah, the sweep of the floor from underneath the polythene. We've lifted some of the polythene, put the broom handle underneath and breaking the solid lines, it's like moles, <laughs> like they do in gardens. Yeah. So it's the only way we could do it <laughs> to clear the polythene get the lime off it because it is solid. So let's join there. It's a join there, okay. What about near the wall? Will that get it? I don't know. Hold on. Oh, that's what we're trying to break off. Yes, it's working. All right, so after about 10 minutes of chipping and chopping. Change of plan. We've had to, we've got to. Yeah. And um, that's really, really nice down there. That's That was the idea that we wanted, but that just needs smoothing off and yes. that'll be perfect. We've lifted this bit of polythene to a joint and discovered it's really wet underneath. Down here. Because basically we finished in this area, there is a little bit to do still. I can use a movable piece of plastic as I go around mm. and do those bits. This is going to all have to be piled into the middle. Yeah. We're not having a skip till the end. No. But it can sit in the centre here as a pile. Yes. But the walls have got to breathe and our floor's got to breathe otherwise we're going to cause ourselves problems. Plastic's up. In this area, we'll bundle there till one day we get a skip. And also Another because skip. Another skip. And also because we want to leave the plastic down over there, because that little bit of ceiling, if you remember, still needs doing. But the rest of it's come up now. Yes. And gone along all the edges, they're looking really good. Might work quite reached around yeah, here. Yeah, not at all. <coughs> but you get the That's idea. Yes, you can. How's that? Yeah, perfect. Floors, plastic is up off the floor. Obviously still going to do something with that. Keep pointing out the bad things as opposed to the positives. Positives. Positivity! Look yeah. at this, it's beautiful. I'm really happy. Yeah. <laughs> We've lifted all the extra lime off this plastic and we're actually going to curl the plastic back like a carpet as it were for this long weekend just to let the floor dry out. Can you see a darker patch there? This damp stuck underneath this plastic is not doing anything any favours. So we will do that for the weekend. Yes. And uh, leave it to dry out. This time I'm doing a loaf of bread. So what I'm using is a cast iron cooking pot with lid. Whoa, we've got the genie out of the bottle. <laughs> I've preheated it. And this is my dough, and I did this overnight. I let it prove overnight in the fridge. Makes no sense, I know, but it works. That Not is definitely hot. Yes, it is. This is the difficult bit, it's the only difficult bit. There we go. It's in there. Lid on. Back in the oven. Back in the furnace. 20 minutes, half an hour. We'll have bread. <laughs> We're doing all right. Do, I'm asking now. 
because mm -hmm. you've always made it in the other cast iron pot that we've got. Yes. Um, it's ready. Bongos. It's ready. Okay. So what do you do to make it brown, or are you just do you, is that just how it is going to be? This is going to how this is going to be. Okay, so it's been allowed to cool for a while, not long enough really, but we just need to get in. And that's it. Now Lily's made the first cut. I won't be allowed to cut it because I cut at a different angle to Lillian. Yes, I cut that way and he cuts that whatever. Yeah. Left-handed, every right-handed. Yes. Here we go. Looks good, doesn't it? Yours. Yes, you can see how much it is still a little bit too hot as the butter is sort of like just moving about on the bread as opposed to doing what it's supposed to do. <laughs> but it is a warm day as well. Yeah. Go on then. No, 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 no. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, you've got to do it yourself. I'm not complaining. <laughs> We're making cakes. Uh, I like them. It's food, of course you like them. Never thought of that. <laughs> so, made my own sausage meat again. Smells nice. So, I'm sure everybody's watched other people make scotch eggs before. And I'm not very good at it, because I don't have a delicate touch. Does that mean I've got to do it? Yeah, Phil Collins never sang about me. Oh, that was an invisible touch, wasn't it? <laughs> I think we've got too much sausage meat. Yes. It's like working with Yeso for me, this. It's sort of like, oh, well, I'm going to stick to you. I know I should wet my hands, but this is quite wet as it is. I don't want to make it any more wet. Right. In the flour. Too much flour. <laughs> as I say, Lillian's better at this job than me. <laughs> Just dust it. What? <laughs> you're, you're making a meal of that. I know. <laughs> hey up. You've got people ringing up and everything. People at the gate and everything. Yes. Right, come back to you in a minute. So, where was I? Oh, there. Ooh, it's a bit posh. I know. I don't know if I've got it right. A bit there. Is it egg covered in meat and then breadcrumbs? Yes. You got it right then? Yeah, you don't cover it in breadcrumbs and then cover it in egg afterwards. No. Don't wait. So you've done it right? Yes, but I also make a very mess. Which is why you normally do this bit. Because you can't stand doing this. Yes, we used to make them batches at the farm shop I used to work at. We used to make 60 at a time. I know. <laughs> Do you want me to keep going? Yes, please. Because you hate the feeling of that on your fingers. I do. You? It drives me insane. <laughs> it's like being scrunched up, which is why I don't like wearing gloves. You're going to fry those. Yes, until the outside is properly nice and golden and cooked. And not knowing how deep we've actually done the sausage meat, because we are greedy, I'll then pop them in the oven as well to make sure they cook all the way through yeah. to the centre. Yeah, we do have the food thermometer in machine. Yes. So we can test them anyway. Yeah. I think that'd be a good idea. Agreed. Oh, they've gone all flat. Good, they've got a flat bottom. Mm. So there we have it. Yeah. They were lightly fried to give a nice crispy edge in our DFF, as it were, deep fat fryer. <laughs> Not really. Then they've been in the oven. Yep. And Chris is now just going to check the temperature using our machine. Yeah, I got my probe. Meat probe. It's absolutely brilliant. It cleans up well as well. Yeah. I can't clean that. I don't clean that too much because that's been in the barbecue, so that's been smoked and everything. It'll be really tasty. I know. Right. <whistles> that is definitely heated up. 81C. Nice. There awesome. we go. 
Nice one. Yes. Now you've got to wait for them to be cool enough to eat. Yeah, because you can't eat them really, really, really hot. They're not as nice at no. all. The sausage meat on the outside is, but the egg in the middle now is not so nice. They either want to be cooled and just, just warm or stone cold. Yes. So these are cooled down enough now. Which one should I cut open the smallest one? Well, we know, yes, that's probably the driest one. I know. You're with that. Yes. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And because we'd intend to eat these cold from out of the fridge and everything, the eggs were hard boiled first. Yes. They weren't soft boiled like you'd have them if you'd intend to eat them warm, hot. Do you know what that needs? Eating. Apart from that, what it needs eating with? My mouth. English salad cream. Mm. That's Mine. a happy face. There you Mine. go. Easter eggs. Didn't get chocolate Easter eggs, you got Scotch eggs instead. Mine. <laughs> we'll have a try. Mmm, tasty. Mmm. Mine. Mine, mine, mine. David says if it's that good, I'll sit nicely for it. I want some too. I'm sorry, mate. <laughs> well, somebody's uh, having a nice morning so far. You alright, Kay? Good girl. You've been lady sprawling out. Okay, so. After the mad, mad dust storm we had yesterday, it's clearing up. It's cleared up nicely. And a little bit of haze over there. It is first thing in the well, early-ish in the morning. Unfortunately, as you can see, all the dust from the quarry again. But that's the way of life. So we're going back to start down here in the caves. There she is, fire person Lillian. Watering my house. <laughs> yes. Kind of crazy, isn't it? <laughs> yes, all this trouble making it dry. Now we've got to wet it. And now we've got to wet it numerous times until it's all ready to be uh, be done. Because if you don't wet it enough. And all that happens is a little bit below the surface pulls the moisture out of the uh, of the product, and then it doesn't take properly. Exactly. So, right, I'll get on with the mix. Okay. So interestingly, I saw a news report this morning, and apparently, we haven't had rain for four months. We have had rain, we've had showers and such like, but not enough for it to actually register on the official system to be pro considered proper rainfall. And if this continues, there is severe concern for agriculture for this, for this summer. Because if, every, if the land isn't wet now, it's going to have to be irrigated, but if there's no water coming down to have water available for irrigation, you've got your catch-22. So the news report said, technically we've had no rain for four months, and we have nothing um, on the cards for the next month either. And there is severe concern in the newspapers. So it's going to be an interesting time. So technically, apparently, we're down 100 litres per square metre for this time of year. Don't know don't really understand it other than apparently we haven't had enough rain and we are not due enough rain and there's potentially going to be a big problem yes so we best hurry up and get all this stuff done yes before we all end up on water restrictions which potentially could happen yeah i suppose we've still got our well here with our own water that we could oh, use yeah, that that's not a problem yeah exactly okay so just doing our second mix Houston we have a problem, we'll explain that in a moment. Yes we do. Uh, so we're starting, we've just finished bag of sand, starting this one. And look how it's been, it's capped on the top. I could walk on that 
and it not break. But we want the sand. So I'm taking my frustrations out on the bag of sand. Well, so far, the sprayer is working. And I've been splatting in other areas over there. Brilliant. But now the sprayer isn't working, is it? No, it's not. I just don't believe our luck. I just, no. it just, ah. Uh. I know. Anyway, we'll take you over. We'll take the light over because it's very, very dark in here. Yeah. With this, uh, with this camera. Right, so mind your eyes. Bring the light. So happily using the compressor, compressing, 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 doing its thing. And it's blown a, a thing. There was a, a brass-looking br end cap on this. And it's just blown. And it blew. It actually broke in half. Yes, yeah, so I'll put it away so we don't okay. lose it so I know exactly what I'm looking just, for. It's a cap with a thread and it just, it's short, it's short off. Just it left, off. Yeah, it left the thread inside and its top came off. Yeah. Just broken. Yeah, so we've got a um, bar replacement one for it. Yes. Because this isn't our compressor. No, I know. Thank you very much for lending us it, Glenn. We it will repair it. And we will make it look pretty before you have it back. Yes. So how are you doing it now? This way. Is it working? Yes. Yeah, it is, thankfully. Because we have another machine, so it's got to work. Something's got to work. What about where it's all the crumbly stuff? Um, I'll show you crumbly stuff here. Hang on a sec. Yeah, you've got to try again in a second. I'll let me just get a better position. Ready? Uh, yeah. Fine. Okay. Ta da! This wall's had its first coat. Notwithstanding the machine not working, done by hand, you can tell. These two walls had rocks that were weird, there were striations, they were going to be difficult to plaster because they were going to fight the edges of the rocks. So they've had a splatter-thon coat, that one and that one, and it's matching power over there and over there. So tomorrow, come back and... Do it all over again. Do it all over again. <laughs> First coat and we keep on going. Yes. So I hope you enjoy the video. If you do, as ever, thumbs up, subscription, comments. Yes. And apparently Chris has put cookery at the beginning of this. Hope you enjoy the cookery. I certainly did. <laughs> Thanks for watching Tales from the Caveside. If you like what we do, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. Drop us a like and leave us a comment. See you on the next one.